Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind. And you won't climb up coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up coming after me Megan here and I'm so excited to be with you for Cornerstone Kids Church today. So I know in the last few weeks Miss Rachel has been teaching you guys a few different lessons with the big question, what is the church? And we've been learning that the church is all Christians everywhere who gather together in their communities to worship and serve God. We're going to focus on this question a little bit more today with our lesson called The Good News. Now, I think that's a great title, The Good News, because think about it. Good news is just really awesome to share, right? Can you think about a time where you've had to share good news? Maybe you had a new baby brother or sister or a baby cousin in the family and you were so excited to share that with other people. Maybe you had an awesome day at school and you just couldn't wait to get home to tell the awesome thing that happened. I think we can all agree no matter what it is, good news is a good thing to share. 
Well, we're going to be learning about some good news that Paul was sharing um, with the people in Rome through a letter that he wrote to them. But before we jump into today's good news, I think we should play a pretty good game. So I'm going to go grab a friend and we're going to give this game a try. And then maybe you can too before we jump into our Bible story lesson and video together and just learn and grow because we are the church. Let me go grab that friend. Hi friends, I'm back with my friend, this is Katie, and we are going to show you how to play the game called Roads to Rome. So you just need two pieces of paper, or maybe if you have like a carpet square or some cushions at home, you can use it. But basically, our object is to use these two things to get from one side of the room to the other and back. You ready to play? I'm ready. All right, Katie and I are gonna play real quick. You can pause and play in your living room or wherever you're watching and then press play when you're ready to keep going. So let's do it. wondering why did we play that game just before we jumped into our lesson together. Well, I told you that the name was Roads to Rome, and that's really what it has to do with today's Bible story. In the times of the New Testament, Rome was just in control of so much land. They had such a large empire there. So in order for everyone to get around and for them to get to the places of their empire and what they controlled, they started to build roads. Their roads helped them get from here to there. Now, there was a saying because of how big Rome was and how many roads they built, the saying, all roads lead to Rome. Well, today we're going to hear about a letter that Paul sent to believers who are living in Rome. So let's jump into our Bible story video and I'll see you back here in a little bit to talk through some things. Jesus' followers in the early church wanted everyone to hear the good news about Jesus. God had kept his promise to send a savior. He sent his own son, Jesus, to earth to rescue sinners. Jesus lived the perfect life we cannot live and died the death we deserve to die. On the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. This good news, the gospel, changes everything. People who love Jesus tell others about him. That's what Paul did. Paul wrote a letter to believers in Rome to tell them that Jesus was the savior they had been waiting for. Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone sins and needs to be rescued. God saves people who believe the good news about Jesus. Because of their faith, God forgives their sins and gives them eternal life. Paul wrote that God showed his love for us by sending his son to die for us. We were sinners, enemies of God, but Jesus died and rose again to make us right with God. Jesus is God's good gift to us. Let's rejoice. Paul reminded the people about the first man, Adam. When Adam sinned, death came into the world. Everyone sinned, so death spread to all people. God sent Jesus into the world to bring us a gift that is greater than Adam's sin. Adam brought death, but Jesus brings life. Adam disobeyed God, but Jesus obeyed him perfectly. Does that mean we can keep on sinning because we are forgiven? Paul said no. no. Jesus sets us free from sin so we can live in a new way that honors him. Because God created everything, he is in charge of everything. Everyone sins or disobeys God. Our sin separates us from God. 
The good news of the gospel is that God sent his son Jesus to take the punishment we deserve. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved. Our Bible story today was based on Romans chapters 5 and 6. So I'd love to jump back into chapter 5 and read a few verses with you guys, and then we can talk a little bit about it. So I'm opening up to Romans chapter 5, and we're going to be reading starting in verse 6 through 11. So if you want to grab your Bibles, you can hit pause, or you can just listen as I read these verses. Here we go. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Now this is that good, good news, right? We just watched the Bible story video where we heard about how Adam, the first man, he made some bad choices, right? And sin came into the picture where we were disobedient to God. And we are all sinners. And unfortunately, sin separates us from God. But God, like it just said here, loved us so, so much. He didn't want that separation to stay. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. We didn't deserve it. We did nothing for it. We were sinners. And it said that he demonstrated his own love for us while we were still sinners making bad choices. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so we could have a relationship and we can see him one day in heaven. Now, looking at verses 6 through 11, I have two questions I want to talk to you guys about. The first question is, what does justification mean? We heard that twice in the, in the verses that we read, but what does that big word justification mean? Well, it's a pretty great word. Justification is the forgiveness of sins and the gift of righteousness. When God forgives us our sins, he says that we're not guilty anymore. Not only are we not guilty, he also says that we are righteous. And because we are forgiven, we are right with God and we can go to heaven. Now, I have another question for you guys. I said we had a couple. My second question is this. How do we know that God loves us? Hmm. How do we know that? Well, here's what we can find right in these verses. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus, to die in our place to save us from our sins, and then to rise again in victory over sin and death. All people who have rebelled against God are sinners, but God gave up his dear son for anyone who will believe. Now that is true love, and that is truly good news, right? And we call that good news the gospel. Well, I am so thankful that we get to talk about the good news and the gospel together. And let's keep that conversation going. We're going to check in with Pastor Brian and a question from some kids. And then I'll meet you right back here to talk a little bit more. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Today, Faith from Edgewater, Colorado asks... Are there really people in the world who have never heard about Jesus? Faith, that is a fantastic question. You know, some of us have grown up in places maybe where there are churches all over the place. Uh, maybe we grew up in the church always hearing about Jesus. And so it's surprising to think that some people may have never in their lives heard about Jesus. But the big answer is that's the case. There are some people in this world who have never heard about Jesus. You know, in today's Bible story, we heard that the good news that God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners is available for everybody. 
And there are over 7.6 billion people in the world today. That's a lot of people. But hear this, more than 40% of that, so almost half of those people live in people groups that we would consider to be called unreached. It means that there are only a small, very small number of people in that group that have heard about Jesus or follow Jesus. So there are many, many people who have never heard about Jesus, but there are also many, many people who have heard about Jesus but do not have trusted in Jesus. So we need to think about both. We need to focus on both and love and care about both. We need to send missionaries to remote places where they've never heard about Jesus so they have the chance to hear about him for the first time. But also we need to live on mission here where we live, where there are people all around us who have heard about Jesus but never trusted in Jesus. Because we need to show the love of Jesus to these people. We need to tell them about Jesus. We need to do both because we want them not only to hear about Jesus, but to trust in him so that they can be forgiven their sin and have eternal life with God like we have. So here's a question back for you. What makes you excited or maybe hesitant to share your faith with others? Man, I love hearing from Pastor Brian and the questions that kids come up with and how he just explains them. And I feel like he gave us a really great question back when he asked, what makes you excited or hesitant about sharing your faith with others? Now, it's great if you are just so excited to share this good news and to share what you know about Jesus Christ. Now, if you're hesitant, that's okay too, because we're working to learn and grow together. And part of growing in our Christian walk and growing in our relationship with Jesus is also growing and being able to talk about it. Now, it's really important for us to talk about it because that's how we help the church, all believers, grow. So before we talk a little bit more, I'd love to show you one more short video clip. And it's about a place called Minneapolis, and that is right in the United States. Um, we're just gonna get right to it. We'll take a quick look at this video clip, and then we'll chat a little bit more. When people think of Minnesota, they probably don't think of Africa, but there are hundreds of thousands of Africans living in the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. When missionary Philip Nash first came to the Twin Cities from Nigeria, he met people from African countries like South Sudan, Cameroon, and Ethiopia. They were in need of a church and asked him to start one for African immigrants in the city. God had brought the right person to Minneapolis. Philip and his wife, Jumai, had experience starting two churches in Nigeria. In 2015, the Natchez started the Hope of Nations Gospel Church in their new country. Through the Hope of Nations Gospel Church, many people have studied the Bible and have been trained to share the gospel. People like Kamis, a refugee from South Sudan. Through studying God's word with Philip, he now wants to take the gospel back to his home country. Kamis is especially equipped to share the Bible with people from his home because he knows the culture and the language. The Natchez, Kamis, and others at the Hope of Nations Gospel Church have learned that God provides what is needed to tell others about Jesus, no matter where you are. Welcome back. So, what's so great about that video clip is that it shows the church growing. Philip and Jumai Notch share the good news. Then people who choose to believe in Jesus, they become part of the church, they become believers, and then they share what they know, the good news, the gospel, with other people. And then the church continues to grow as more people learn and more people talk and share the good news. That's exactly how we share the gospel. That's exactly how we grow the church. Well, how exactly do we share the gospel? Now, if you were hesitant, or maybe you haven't had a chance to be sharing this great news with other people, well, we can talk about that now together. We can share the good news in just 
one sentence even. If you wanted to kind of condense it to put it all nicely wrapped in one sentence, you could simply say that God sent Jesus to the world to rescue sinners, right? It's true. He sent his one and only son for us. Now that one sentence shares the big idea, but we could also stretch it out a little bit more into a few different steps, let's say. So I want to share with you five different points that we can use to help tell and share the good news or the gospel with others. So I'm going to show you some pictures that go along with these, and then you're going to get a chance to create your own booklet by coloring some of these pictures and kind of reviewing what each one says so you can get more confident and more excited about sharing this good news. So let's take a look at these steps and then we'll kind of wrap up our morning together. One, God rules. Because God created everything, he is in charge of everything. Two, we sinned. Since the time of Adam and Eve, everyone has chosen to disobey God. The Bible calls this sin. Sin separates us from a holy God and deserves God's punishment of death. Three, God provided. God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue us from the punishment we deserve. It's something we as sinners could never earn on our own. Jesus alone saves us. 4. Jesus gives. Jesus lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose again. Because Jesus gave up his life for us, we can be welcomed into God's family for eternity. This is the best gift ever. And five, we respond. You can respond to Jesus. Believe in your heart that Jesus alone saves you. Repent, turning from self and sin to Jesus. Tell God and others that your faith is in Jesus. All right, friends. So that's it. In five steps, you can share the good news or the gospel with friends, family, whoever you come into contact with. Now, what we have for you guys is in the folder, we actually have a copy for you guys to have those pictures to go along with the five steps and also what I was reading so you can practice what to say and how to share this good news. We've also put in there one that has some blank lines because you know what? We have personal relationships with Jesus Christ, and maybe you want to say these things in a more personal way or in your own words. So the picture clues are there to help you think about the different steps in the gospel story, but if you want to rewrite them in your own words, you can go for it using the lined paper as well. I have my booklet here that I put on a little ring. You can punch a hole in the top and then maybe put some string there or something. And then you guys have your own copy of the good news that you can kind of practice and become more comfortable and excited and confident in sharing. And I even went and added some of the scripture, some of the Bible verses that were listed with each picture to help me remember the scripture or God's word that they are based on. Well, friends, I'm so excited that you stopped by um, to just chat and learn together about the good news today. We're going to do another song um, and end our time with some praise and worship together. So get ready to move around and sing a little bit, and I will hopefully see you guys again very soon. Bye, friends. Feet.